Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network, coming to you from the TeacherCast studios since 2011. Join us each week as we bring you the latest educational news, ed tech updates, and hottest interviews with today's most influential leaders in education. And now, for your host, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is the Jeff Bradbury Show, the show that helps you build your EDU brand, no matter if you're a podcaster, a speaker, a writer, a consultant, a tech coach, anybody that's out there looking to get themselves a little bit out of the classroom and bring in a little bit of extra for their families and do so with amazing people by your side. This is the podcast for you. And today I have an amazing episode coming up. One of our first interviews that we did way back in early January before we even got started the show. Today I am proud to uh, to present to you guys my interview with Dr. Sarah Thomas, the not only an amazing educator, great speaker, fantastic friend to teacher cast but also the creator ceo and founder of the edumatch network i gotta tell you i have been a fan of sarah thomas for six or seven years now when we first met and she was starting off creating edumatch and look at the some of the great things that she has done now she's into book publishing she's speaking she's got a fantastic career she's got not one but what i found out in this in this interview She's got two, two Voxer groups going because the first one overflowed. So she's got an amazing amount of, of opportunities here to create community. And I am looking forward to sharing this with you. I'm going to promise you one thing today, guys. I'm going to keep this introduction very, very quickly. Um, I've been under the weather for the last four weeks and I am still trying to climb my way out of a little bit of sickness today. So with that being said, I am going to just turn the mic over to the interview that I did with Dr. Sarah Thomas. Next week, we've got some great stuff coming on. We're going to be heading into March talking all about websites, SEO, blog posts, uh, all these great things around your websites. If you guys have any ideas for topics, we would love to hear from you guys. I'd love to make some content that is suitable for your needs and your questions. You can, of course, head on over to buildyouredubrand.com. Check everything out contact me over on teachercast or feedback at teachercast.net would love to hear from you guys as i prepare all of the march shows surrounding topics on web design and everything about building your digital hub but before we get into that i want to give you guys my interview with the wonderful dr sarah thomas my guest today is author, speaker, Twitterer, doctor, and a great friend of mine. I want to bring on today Dr. Sarah Thomas. Dr. Sarah, how are you today? Welcome to TeacherCast. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. You know, I love listening to your show and I love your work. So I'm really, truly honored to be on here tonight. I am so excited to have you on and talk about branding. You are, of course, the founder and 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 lead conductor of the EduMatch brand. Tell us a little bit about first, who is Dr. Sarah Thomas? How you doing? Yeah, absolutely. I'm good. How you doing? Good. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So a um, little bit about me. I've been in education um, for 15 years. So I have taught every grade from first to 12th at some point, plus master students. Um, let me see. So right now my role is a regional tech coordinator at the district level. Um, and I also do some adjunct, um, some adjunct work and I'm also the founder and CEO of EduMatch. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Jack of all trades, right? A little bit of everything. <laughs> Every time we go around, we see Dr. Sarah, we hear Dr. Sarah, we're now reading Dr. Sarah. I want to start today and, and really answer the questions that, that kind of, you know, people have about educational brands, about educational speakers. Where, where did EduMatch start? When did you get this idea? And what was the original idea for EduMatch? Yeah, that's a great question. So this almost did not happen. So um, it's pretty wild. I was on Voxer on a Friday night with one of my friends and we were talking about gamification in math. Um, it reminded me, the short version is, it reminded me of a conversation I had with my cousin who used to teach uh, math in New York and he had just given me a book on fantasy sports. So, you know, my friend, I was just like, okay, you know, I wish that 
that there was something out there that would connect you and him and this other guy we know who does a lot of gamification um, and just kind of introduce you all to one another and see what you come up with. So I was just like, I wonder if there's something out there that does that because that would, that would really help me out a lot. So I looked on Twitter. Um, I mean, there were chats, there were boxer groups, things like that, but there was nothing saying, okay, you know, you, you and you get together and talk shop and see what you come up with. So at that point, I decided to just kind of go for it, see what happens. Like, I didn't take it seriously at all. Um, it just threw together some kind of really ugly logo uh, that I made in Google Draw. <laughs> it was my very first time using Google Draw, and uh, it was it was awful. Um, but I tweeted out what I wanted to do, and uh, there was someone in Australia who was responded right away so um, he told me about himself i matched up everything he said with some hashtags tweeted that out over the course of a day and asked him how it went and he was just like it was really good you should keep it going so at that point i started up a website and you know had a google form um by the end of the weekend i had like 10 people sign up and then by the end of a month about maybe 50 60 i don't know how many more um but it grew it grew pretty exponentially so at that point it was just kind of tweeting online but as people joined they brought their ideas and um you know they were um someone asked about a boxer group somebody asked about a twitter chat and a podcast and an ed camp and you know everything that people threw out there then um we tried to flow with as many of those ideas as possible and i mean like some of them have have really worked out over the course of the year so that's that's kind of the story of edumatch now one of the things i noticed that you keep saying is the word we when did edumatch yes. go from i had this idea i reached out to this per like when did this start to grow in from from a single idea into really i mean is it fair to call it a company at this point i mean what 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 is it yeah how does it work <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so it is a company, but I wanted to start it out with we from day one. So I actually like documented the process in a blog post. Um, and that's a good question you asked, cause that's one of the things that I brought up that in that intentionally from day one, um, I would refer to it as a we, because it's not, it's not about me. It's about what we collectively do together. So even if there's one person on board, even if it's me and the guy from, from Australia, then already that's, that's a we, you know? So it started out as a we and that we has continued to expand over the years. So, um, and now, yes, it is a company. Um, there's different branches that do different things. So there's Edumatch, um, the larger umbrella, and then there is a publishing arm, there's a nonprofit arm. There's other things we do, like the the podcast. Um, let me see what else. Uh, we're we're just now expanding the courses. So there's there's a few different things that that we do. That's that's part of Edumatch. But yeah, absolutely, it is it is uh, definitely a company. Well, you you have certainly built your edu brand throughout the last six or seven years with everything. I mean. Like you said, it started off with one little idea. Now you've got all these little side company side things going on. You know, some of the questions that I, I have, like, is this all volunteer? Are people here? I mean, obviously, like with the books and stuff, you pay to buy a book. There's a little bit of a money transaction <laughs> in there. But I mean, like what kind of a if you don't mind me asking, like what what does yeah. this look like for people? Because people sometimes yeah. go, well, wait a minute, you're a teacher, but you're an entrepreneur, but you're an edupreneur, but you're now the producer <laughs> of the these videos. And like, what does that look like, dollars and cents? And feel free to answer that however you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll say at the beginning, it was costing me money and it cost me a lot of money. I did pay dearly. So I got to definitely be open and honest and transparent about that up front because before there was EduMatch um, and I was, you know, presenting, then, you know, I was kind of going here, there and everywhere. Any conference that would take me, I would go and present. And I have to thank Sally Mae for that because <laughs> I was working on my uh, I was working on my doctorate at the same time. So student loans came in handy. Thank you very much, Sally mm -hmm. Mae. I'm paying dearly for that now. Um, but that was an investment that I put in myself. And um, I feel like over the years, you know, the connections that this brought, just the joy that this brought, just connecting with people um, has has just paid for itself um, in that domain. And, and it eventually translated into, um, you know, me presenting and being, you know, a speaker, featured speaker, keynoter, uh, things of that nature. And that does generate some income. Um, in addition with the books, like you said, and that is kind of how EduMatch is funded through the um, through the publishing arm right now is um, where it 
where we are generating revenue. Um, so, you know, there's a team, so definitely working with the team. Um, but I would say that for, uh, for most of its existence, EduMatch has been kind of like a dependent to me, <laughs> you know, like how you claim dependence on your taxes. EduMatch yeah. was my dependent. And now it's, it's starting to get to a point where it's almost ready to, to move out the house, AKA off of my paycheck. Um, <laughs> but you know, it takes time. Um, so, I mean, we, we were actually very fortunate in the fact that um, it didn't take long to kind of start breaking even when it came to the books. Um, so, you know, as we continue to grow, then that's, that's definitely um, icing on top of the cake, but the cake is definitely um, getting those stories out there and, and getting, uh, getting people to share, you know, their knowledge so that we have this, this amazing pool of resources is that where we can all learn with one another so that's that's like the the guiding mission that, that drives it so everything else is is great but uh but honestly i i have paid for it out of pocket because it's something that i love so much you know i know everybody out there is listening to this as an audio podcast and i wish you could see the smile on sarah's face as she talks about <laughs> everything of her accomplishments. And, and I could just tell how proud you are of what you've accomplished and what, when I say you, of course, I mean, Dr. Sarah, but I also mean the community of EduMatch. I mean, you know, you and I are connected on email. We're connected on Twitter, but I'm always amazed when I look at that Voxer group and it's got what, like half a million people on it. And it's, it, that thing is just constantly <laughs> moving, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love, love, love the Voxer space. If, if, if I'm allowed to pick favorites, that's that's actually my favorite community, the the Voxer community, because the conversations just ongoing, especially in that very first room. And I also love the second room. Uh, we maxed out at 500, so we started a second room, and that one that one's not as active. But when it gets going, then those discussions are so rich. Talk to us a little bit about the brand. You had said that you created your first logo through Google Drawings. What was the inspiration mm -hmm. for that? How did that go? I, I, I tell the story of I woke up one day and I came up with Apple and Mortarboard and suddenly that was my teacher cast logo and, and away I went. Was it yeah. something that inspired you? Was it something that you um, had in your mind where you just, just like you said, you threw it together in Google drawing? What was that genesis of the, because <laughs> really when we're looking at this, our logo is our first brand. Take us, right. take us back, Dr. Sarah. Oh my goodness. So with that very, very first logo, that, that one did not last long. It lasted about maybe two months. <laughs> and then someone who actually knew what they were doing was just like, here, you know, I can design a logo for you. So do you want to use this one instead? And I was like, absolutely. Thank you so much. Bless you for this because my logo skills are not really, um, you know, I know my strengths and, and logo design is not one of them. Um, <laughs> but really, um, edgy match when I was thinking about it, then, then to me, you know, it, it, it kind of sounded like match.com. And so pretty much out of the gate, our tagline was, this is not a dating site. So it's not <laughs> like educators dating educators. So I kind of riffed off of that and there was like a heart and a lightning bolt through it. And it was, oh my gosh, it was, it was horrible. And people would tell me, they're just like, this logo is horrible. And I was just like, I know. And they're just like, but tell me about it. Like, so it actually worked to our benefit because, you know, it was so ugly that it generated interest. So that, that was kind of cool. <laughs> and from there, you created this website and, and, it, and it has grown from there. Talk to us a little bit about some of your philosophies on here. I mean, did you set out to run a business? Did you set out just to change the world? Did you, did you just land on something wonderful? I mean, what was the vision going into all of this stuff that really went from that one interaction with Australia, I think you said, into publishing? Voxer groups, yeah. Facebook group. like what when did it when did you know that you had something? Yeah, you know, it's funny because when I started it, then I really was not taking it seriously at all. It was it was kind of like a joke, like, oh yeah, you know, this is match.com, but not match.com, it's edgy match and blah blah blah, and just just kind of having fun with it. And I mean, we we've kind of kept that fun spirit to it, but I would say that things really started um I mean, there have been different points where I've just kind of looked back and been like, whoa, like, you know, like this, this is actually happening. I mean, and, and even to this day, um, sometimes I just, because a lot of times when life moves so fast, you don't have those moments to just 
sit back and reflect and uh, just think of, oh, okay, you know, I was this, we were right here, you know, in, in 2014 and now it's 2020 and we're here, you know, cause things, things keep coming up and they keep going so fast, you know? So um, I would say that, that probably the moment, probably the first time that, that I realized that there was something there was um, after getting that, that beta tester feedback that, mm-hmm. Um, that in Australia he had connected with um, several people. I forgot how many he said, but he was just like, this is awesome. So hearing that was so validating. And had that moment not happened, then there may not have been any of this. Um, no edgy match, none of that. So, um, yeah. So I, I guess I really have to thank the PLN for uh, for putting their faith into it. So that that was that's been really cool. You know, it's awesome hearing you talk about this. You and I have very similar stories of how we started, what our missions were and how it grew. I, I have to ask you the question here. When when we think of EduMatch and we say, what is EduMatch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we be thinking of EduMatch is Sarah Thomas or EduMatch is a kid? Like, at what point does, does Sarah break herself away from the EduMatch brand and start to become her own educator like, uh, you, know, you know what i'm saying like yes and i, I get this like, like yeah. am, am i jeff am i teacher cast are you sarah are you edge match are we are you one and the same are you the leader of like you know what i'm talking about here I, I, it's hard to put even for me it's right. hard to put these things in words <laughs> yeah no i feel you i feel you and i feel like um from from the beginning it's been like two separate entities i know a lot of times when i go into the boxer group then um you know i have my own personal stances on on various things you know i I tend to be very political um so a lot of times i preface things by saying okay this is sarah speaking i'm not speaking on behalf of edumatch but here's what i think and you know i'll drop what i think and and i feel like you know when it comes to the edumatch brand i mean I think one of the one of the most positive things is that there are so many different kinds of people in EduMatch, um, all learning and growing together, and and really the community is built on the deeper connections. Um, so going beyond just you know the introductions and this is what I do and you know here's the answer to this. Okay, see you next time. It's like really getting to know people. Like this, we started in 2014, so this is like going on six years of some of the same people having conversations and getting like a full picture of one another. Like, uh, you know, I, I, for, for people that there might be some people I've never even met face to face, but I can tell you what a day in their life may look like just based on the conversations that we've had, you know? And, um, there's been people that, you know, I met them the first time I met them, it felt like a high school reunion. The second time I'm, I'm, you know, over at their house eating dinner with their family. So, I mean, really those deep connections. So, um, so that's, that's really what we are based on. I feel like I got very far away from your question, but that is a, that's a Sarah ism. That's not an edgy match ism. (laughs) The other question on everybody's mind is I bet this takes up a good portion of your day, right? You're, 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 Mm. you're, you're a full-time employee somewhere, right? Yes. So how do you manage full-time family life, entrepreneur, book publisher, keynote speaker, yada, yada, yada. Talk, talk, what is 24 hours in the life of Sarah Thomas? Oh my goodness. So, so that is one thing that I am constantly struggling with because I feel like the kid who wants all of the toys on Christmas, right? Um, There's just like, there, there's only 24 hours in a day, but there's so much to do. So I feel like, um, I feel like I, I need to give credit where credit is due and really it's been teamwork that has um, propelled this forward. Um, there have been so many, you know, members of the EduMatch publishing team, members of the EduMatch uh, board of directors, members of the EduMatch communities, like community leaders. And it's it's been, it's been from our collective work together that this has really grown. Um, so I would say that, that that has probably been the biggest impact as far as time management goes. Um, I think also the fact that there's so many overlaps in my life. Um, I feel very blessed and fortunate in that a lot of the things I do, um, you know, kind of work together. Um, for example, 
if I were to learn a skill about um, video editing for Edumatch, because we do like our videos, right? So if I'm working on my video editing and Final Cut, then this also helps me as a regional tech coordinator because I'm always doing videos like for my team at, at work. So I feel like a lot of it, it's like, it's, it's, it's like feeling into one another a lot of the times, um, the skills transferability. So, I mean, that, that is definitely uh, very lucky, but I have to say that balance is something that I am like constantly chasing. And I feel like sometimes, you know, you, you're, you're juggling things and sometimes um, things will drop, but it's just, you know, a matter of time, you just got to pick them back up. I think that that's actually part of the balance right there. Like knowing when you can drop certain things um, to give more attention to something else. And, and then when you can go back and pick that up. Uh, so that that's part of the balance as well. You know, I, I think anybody who's putting themselves out there as a content creator always tries to find that balance between life, family, that next Ed Camp ISTE conference, whatever it is. You know, recently when we launched the Jeff Bradbury show here in our first episode, we talked about why to build your EDU brand. What does it bring us? And we talked about the fact that it helps us in three different ways. It helps our families, it helps our students, and it helps us with our passions. So let's go down the list here. How has EduMatched helped, changed, supported your personal life, your family life? How how is it making an impact to those around you? Ah, so I would say that it definitely um I, that's that's one party that I forgot to acknowledge um, my family like my family has really been super supportive in this whole journey I remember my very first time this is this predates edge match but the very first time that I um, that I spoke at a conference outside of my general area it was actually in New Jersey mm -hmm. um, it was Edscape back in 2013 and <laughs> my parents made the drive up with me and I mean they've always been super supportive um, you know, my mom is one, uh, she's a treasurer in our EduMatch Foundation, our nonprofit part board of directors, because that's, you know, she has a lot of experience in that domain. And my dad uh, published a book through us. Um, and I mean, just my brother, my sister-in-law, they've been super supportive, you know, a uh, special someone in my life is also an educator. So he's also been very supportive. Um, so, I mean, I feel like, I feel like it's a blessing just having all of this, this love and support um, around. And in some ways it, it brings us to closer together as a family. How has it helped out your students or your, you know, educational career family? Cause as you said, uh, you know, yeah. you're, you're, so you're doing final cut out here. You're doing final cut in there, right? It's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, in my current role, my full-time role, I, I'm not directly with students. However, I work a lot with their uh, with their teachers as well as with their administrators um, and occasionally with their parents and occasionally with them. So I feel like um, probably I would say one of the coolest things that has come to pass as a result of EduMatch in my um, career has been connections I could bring in to my role um, that I might not have had otherwise. So uh, different people, you know, with their, with their knowledge, like uh, at, at one point we did a DigiSit summit um, for our district um, and it ended up, it was going to be a professional day, but the snow day took that away. So um, we ended up doing it with um, students, for students at the high school. But um, Dr. Mary Alice Curran, great friend of mine, uh, she was going to be like our, our keynote speaker, but she she rocked it just um, speaking to this amazing group of, of young folks. And so, I mean, things like that, I, I really, really love that. And vice versa, you know, my team brings so much to me. Um, and, and without them, then I, then none of this would have been possible either because, um, I'm very lucky to work now with the team that has poured so much into me and helped me to change the way I view myself. Um, they helped me to identify the leadership capability, um, within me probably around year year five or six and have continued to just kind of pour into me. So, I mean, it's been like a two-way street. When we're talking about our passions, 
what has EduMatch brought out in you? What, do you? what did you find out about yourself over the last six, seven years? Maybe you didn't know you had or maybe was kind of hiding behind and now EduMatch kind of unleashed this, this different Sarah. Ooh, I think the fact that I'm addicted to Voxer. <laughs> but, but seriously, um, I would say a passion to create spaces for a conversation. Like, um, I mean, I, I always kind of knew I was entrepreneurial. You know, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. Um, I, like, honestly, before even getting into education, I thought I was going to be like some kind of record label, you know, exec. Like, uh, we had like a little record label in college. So, I mean, this is kind of a continuation of that, except it's, I mean, not to take anything against anyone in the music industry, but I feel that the way that that it's panning out in my life, this is actually uh, making some kind of positive change. Um, so at least I hope it is. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. Um, but but I feel like like this is where where I was meant to be. And um, I love, love, love creating spaces for dialogue and facilitating that. Um, so I have to give a huge shout out to Ed Camp Voice, Ed Camp, um, Ed Camp EduMatch, Ed Camp Collab, um, all of these different spaces that that I've had the opportunity to work with some amazing people in terms of organizing um, or co-organizing those spaces. I'm curious, what's the first thing that you think about when you wake up every morning? Um, probably, probably stocks. <laughs> you play the market. <laughs> I do, I do. The Robin Hood app is a game changer. <laughs> That's like my newest addiction. <laughs> what, what, what are you, what are you into these days? Oh goodness, um, man! I know today I bought some YY and that paid off very well. I don't even know what it is, but you know, I just kind of look and see what's going up, and I'm just like, all right, let me jump in on that. And when it's not, then I just kind of ditch it. But you know, eh, it's it's all good. I'm sure there are better ways to do it. So <laughs> are, are, are we going to see the? It's fun though. Are we going to see the Edu Match stock anytime soon? Are you going public with this thing? Oh, <laughs> I would love to create something like separate, you know, and maybe have like some kind of cryptocurrency at some point. Maybe I don't know, 2050 or something. Watch out for that. The EM cryptocurrency. You know? <laughs> nice. <sighs> you know, we've both been doing this for so long, and when we when you turn around. What what do you notice that's that's similar to seven, eight years ago? And and what's been your biggest like, oh, that changed and that changed for the good. Like, wh where do you yeah. see education now versus eight years ago? Obviously, Voxer is, you know, social media is different. You know, there's there's different trends in there. But like, what, what do you see? And that's like, it's still here. And what are you seeing? Like, hey, this is kind of cool now. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like there's there's been so much growth as you said in social media in technology just things that we're able to do now and i would say video has probably come the uh the furthest um as far as the accessibility of video video chatting um and content content creating tools like it's so much easier now to create content than ever before um so i feel like that is um that that's definitely something that i see and that i love and that people are embracing that opportunity to become content creators and we're creating content for one another i mean like look at all the work that you do it's it's amazing and so inspiring so you know i, I love that I love that. Um, as far as things that have not changed that I was hoping would come a little further along, um, I would say issues of equity, you know, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to like things like the digital use divide, right? Not, not even necessarily the digital divide. I mean, even though that is still a thing, you know, but um, a lot of times you see the schools and districts get a lot of money and, you know, it kind of goes into buying these devices and there's like not really a plan sometimes you know i hear that from people all over um and you know students who are in more affluent areas are encouraged to create while students who are not are you know being subjected to drill and kill over and over um and i mean there's so many different issues when it comes to equity that's just one of them you know there's so many layers um so i i would really hope that in this new decade that we're that we're in um depending on when people define the beginning of a decade but um but hopefully over the course of these next few years then we'll hopefully see some growth in that area how do we do that right i mean you've got a huge community there's a lot of people listening to your show your platform your books 
What can we do over the next year or so to actually help fix those those issues? I feel like a lot of people who are listening right now are already taking a step in that in the right direction because it a lot of it begins with us and the experiences that we're able to provide to our students, these transformational learning experiences uh, where they see their, themselves reflected um, in the classroom and the tools that are being used, um, you know, just giving them the opportunities to create, um, to, to do things of that nature. So, you know, people listening to podcasts or watching watching, you know, videos or taking courses or whatever, they're, they're already taking a step to, to help solve the problem by, um, Mm -hmm. by leveling themselves up. So that's, that would probably be like, um, one, one major thing that individual educators can do. Um, as far as schools and districts, then Coastal has a great digital equity toolkit that I would highly recommend that they check out, um, in terms of solutions at a, at a broader scale. But, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of solutions out there and, and, and I'm very happy that, um, that people are, you know, perking up and, and paying attention um, and trying to make that positive change. If somebody wants to join the EduMatch uh, community, how do you suggest them go going about it? Do they get a hold of you? Do they go to your website? How does somebody become an EduMatcher? Oh, um, so I would say originally it was just going to the website and clicking the sign up button and signing up uh, there. Now I will be 100% transparent and say that I have not uh, transferred the list over just yet, but there are multiple multiple avenues to get involved. So one of them would be the podcast. So um, if they go to edumatch.org and click on the uh, click on the podcast tab and then sign up, then they can join um, our weekly Twitter chat slash um, slash video chat, more so the video chat um, as a panelist on on whatever topic we're discussing. So there will be dates and times on that. Um, there's also a Voxer group that we have, and all of that is linked on our website as well on the Get Connected page. Um, let me see. If anyone's interested in publishing, then um, edumatchpublishing.com, then there is a... Um, there's a form on the FAQ page where they could sign up to either contribute to um, EduSnap 20 because EduSnap 19 just came out and you were part of that. So thank you so much for your contribution. My pleasure. Um, yeah, yeah. Great, great chapter. And uh, so anyone who wants to participate, you know, the call is open for next year for EduSnap 20. And um, in addition, solo books, there's a link there where people can can um, fill out a pitch form for their own solo books. So there's a lot of different avenues. You know, we're on Facebook. Uh, there's groups there. Uh, shout out to Melody McAllister, our logistics manager, who does an awesome job running our Facebook group for EduMatch Publishing. And we also have an EduMatch Facebook group. But I mean, we're we're like on most forms of social media and still continuing to grow. Just check out the EduMatch hashtag on everything. And it is amazing <laughs> to see this community. Now, we, we're talking a lot about building your brand, creating something to help others share their passions. But I got to ask you here, what inspires you? Who inspires you? Is there somebody out there that's doing some amazing work or something that's out there, some kind of a movement? Like what What's giving you inspiration these days? Oh, man, there's so much out there and just trying to draw on it when I see it. I get it from so many sources. I get it from you. I get it from, um, you know, the other podcasts I listen to, um, other people who are like we're, we're all marching alongside, you know, towards that common purpose. So that's that's really where I get my inspiration from and being able to talk about it, um, ask questions, you know, kind of compare notes to see what we can do to best support one another. That's extremely inspiring to me. So um, so so really, I get it from from my PLN. And um, also, you know, I listen to some stuff outside the field as well, just to get some ideas. So, yeah. So the, the question I used to ask is what's on your iPod? But I think we have to update that one for 2020 and say, you know, uh, get top, top couple pot. We have a lot of edu- educational podcasters that are going to be listening to this. So here, here's I'm going to put you on the spot. Right. W- what's on your Ooh. iPod? Oh, my gosh. I, I, I almost want to, like, open it up and look at the <laughs> list. But <laughs> there's so many, like so many people are doing some awesome stuff. Um, let me just. OK, 
I always have to give a shout out to Dr. Will um, because he is um, like the the Dr. Will show is um, it, it's it's been a game changer for me, especially since he changed up the format. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's always a great one to listen to. Now, I feel like if I start listing off more than one, then I'm going to get myself in trouble because <laughs> people are going to be like, what about mine? So <laughs> I will I will recommend I would recommend that one to get started. <laughs> and, and you know what? If you had to pick one and I would say the same. Go check out the Dr. Will show. Follow Dr. Will online. Great guy. And and again, I, I, I go back to some of the stuff that we're doing here on this on the Jeff Bradbury show here is a direct result to the work we did with Edu Match over the summertime and the Dr. Will show and, and the the Edu edupreneur video and there's, I mean, there's so many different things that we could keep going and talking about here um so we're going to definitely call this part one of the interview but when you look at edu match when you look at your brand when you look at where this is going it is a new year it's a new decade where do you see yourself four or five years down the road if, if you had a crystal ball where would you like to see dr mm-hmm. sarah where would you like to see edu match <laughs> Oh man. All right. I would love to see us doing, um, more, more of the same because I'm really enjoying it, really loving, um, hearing everyone's story and, and, and getting those, uh, voices out into the community. So definitely want to continue with that. Um, in addition, you know, we're looking into some new things. We're looking into courses so that, um, I just, launch pre pre sell pre sold my very first one so just kind of testing out the water so i can like tell other people you know as they sign up to do them through edu match like what to expect um so i'm just kind of you know dipping my toe in the water to find out um and i would say you know personally like i i feel like the last decade was was all about tying up loose ends for me uh, as far as like school so you know i got to wrap that up finally cross the stage 10 and a half years later and you know, that's like the probably the the world record for longest doctorate program i don't even know <laughs> like continuous with no <laughs> no interruption um but i would say in this decade maybe like um i well more than maybe but i absolutely want to see um what the personal side of things will have to offer so um definitely making some strides in that way and uh, knocking on wood, they continue to to go well. So, yeah. I, I want to get a little nerdy with you. Can, can we can we get a little branding nerdy here for a second? Right. Favorite, yeah, let's fa- do it. Favorite applications, favorite things that you do. I'm going to fire a couple things at you. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you use. Sound pretty cool? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do this. Favorite application for tweeting? Ah, uh, I would say that one. I, ooh, I had I had one, but it's it's changed the rules, so I can't go with that one. But I, I'll just I'll just go with Buffer for right now. I'll go okay. with Buffer. Yeah. Um, what about you? I, I am I I go back and forth between the Twitter app and TweetDeck, depending on if I'm doing a chat or if I just want to you know keep things up and down and only look at one account at a time. Um, yeah, yeah, those are good. Website platform of choice. Uh, right now I would go with Wix. I was with Strikingly, but I mean they're they're cool, but I do like Wix and the login feature where you can have like the special pages and stuff like that. What would be your pick? I'm a WordPress guy. I, I, I do everything on WordPress. I, I don't mind Squarespace. I WordPress. think Wix is great. I think for kids, Google Sites is great, but for anything on TeacherCast, we 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 go WordPress. Email marketing. Gotcha. Uh, you 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 recently signed up for our TeacherCast 90 day email marketing challenge. What? And I'm looking at edumatch.org and I'm looking at edumatchpublishing.com. You have subscribed to our site all over the place. What is your email platform of choice? <laughs> Oh my goodness, we have MailChimp, but I signed up for the course because I like rarely send out emails just because they they take me like two hours to write. So I'm hoping to to get time management skills down so I can get more regular about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and, and you know what? If I, I will I will put the plug out there. If you guys are interested in the Teacher Cast 90 Day Challenge, check out everything over at Build Your EDU Brand dot. Com. All right. So we got the social media. We got the website. We got the email marketing. Uh, you already mentioned your favorite video app of choice is? Uh, Final Cut. Final Cut? Uh, you, you get bonus yeah. points on that one. Um, podcasting Thank application? <laughs> what, what, what do you record your, your podcast on? I was on, uh, whatchamacallit, I was on Podbean, but now I am on Anchor.fm. Uh, nice. So I made that switch very recently. Yeah. 
You are a, an amazing yeah. and inspirational public speaker. What is your slide deck of choice? Your keynote, your oh, PowerPoint, man. your slides, your haiku. What, what, do you, what are we looking at <laughs> when we get up there and we're watching Dr. Sarah? Oh, it, it it has been keynote. Like recently I made that switch from Google Slides and now I'm about to slide on right back because I see that um now they have like the the um audio feature. That that's what I was looking for with keynote. So yep, but now it's in Google. So I'm kinda I'm kinda partial to both. <laughs> and and I know you said yeah. that you started your 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 logo designs in Google Drawings. Do you, are are you still doing yes. Google Drawings? Do you have a do you have a graphic program of choice? <sighs> I would go with Canva probably. Um, I do a lot of Adobe Spark as well. Uh, Google Draw, you know, I feel like, ah, oh man, this might be my own bias, but you have to be a little bit art artistic, you know, to get something decent out of Google Draw. And that is so not me, <laughs> not at all. What is your company for doing things like your, I, I see you're wearing an amazing edgy match uh, sweatshirt there, a little hoodie. Oh, what, 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 what's your company for, for all things apparel? A lot of, a lot of people ask those questions on, on, on our Facebooks and stuff like that. Like, where do you go to uh, outsource your clothing? Um, lately I've been doing a lot of merch Lee, uh, for like our t-shirts, but we've also used custom ink. This is from custom ink. Um, there's some stuff on, uh, I'm trying to get into Amazon. They have like some kind of Amazon merchandise thing, but I, I don't know. It's a little complicated for me. So <laughs> I need to try again when I have some more time to devote to, to learning it. Yeah. You know, Sarah, I, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, I'm learning a lot. I hope everybody out there, if you guys want to reach out to Sarah, check her out, everything edumatch, edumatch.org, hashtag edumatch. I, I learned that there's two Voxer groups. I had no idea that there was a second Voxer group. That's awesome. <laughs> and congratulations on that success. I, I, I want to know, can, so much. I, I have five more questions for you. And, and, and I, I, I always throw these things at the end because I want to make you think. And now okay. that and okay. now that you're a doctor, it's time to make you think. What is All your right. what, <laughs> I'm rising to the occasion. What is your favorite Twitter or hashtag to follow and why? Don't say edge match. Oh man, that was <laughs> um let me see. And you can say the Dr. Will show, but we've already gone there too. <laughs> yeah, we have. We have. Uh, <laughs> let me see. That's that's a good one. Oh my gosh. Um I don't know. I, I guess I would probably just take it back to um, education. I'm being very bland right now, but <laughs> there's so much. It's like a catch-all, right? There's so much under that. So I, I guess I would give it up to education. With everything that you've seen, everything that you're using, all the great stuff that you see in your job, what's your favorite educational tool these days that you're seeing being used in the classroom? Maybe Flipgrid, maybe Flipgrid. Good answer. I, I really do like that one quite a bit. Yeah. yeah good, good, thanks. good, and good company. Good video. Very, very user friendly. Very, very community friendly. All right, these questions are going to get harder now. Number three, what is the best uh -oh. <laughs> advice you've ever been given as an educator? The best advice I've ever been given as an educator is. Probably to be authentic, um, because that was like in direct opposition to early advice I got that blew up in my face, like my first year or two or three. So <laughs> but being authentic has been the best thing that I've ever done as an educator. What do you hope people remember about you at the end of the day? I, I hope that they remember that. Um, that I um, that I was a strong proponent of telling your story. Um, that I that I fought for um, the grassroots, the power of the grassroots, um, and that collectively and individually, you know, we we all have so much that we can do. So uh, I guess that would be it. And finally, what is the best teachable moment you've ever had? I'll throw it back to my first three years, which were my trial by fire into the field of education. And I almost did not make it. Um, I came in through alternative certification and those three years were extremely difficult. Um, two different schools in those three years. And um, 
I think the lesson there was about um, really how how we all need each other. You know, we all need a network. Um, we need good people in our corner. Um, that lesson has never, I've never forgotten that lesson. And that's been kind of the driving force uh, behind what what I've been trying to do here with uh, with EduMatch. So just just the fact that we're we're stronger uh, with one another. Educator, speaker, podcaster, video producer, uh, book publisher, keynoter, beautiful smile. I'm going to keep going back to that. It is so nice to talk to you, my friend, Dr. Sarah. It's so nice to call you, my friend. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And thank you so much for being a part of the Jeff Bradbury Show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This was awesome to chat with you. And um, I really appreciate you. But the chat is not over. If you guys have any questions for Dr. Sarah, you can, of course, reach out to us. We will be happy to connect you guys or match you up. Don't forget, you can also check her out over on edumatch.org and all things edumatch using the hashtag edumatch. If you like this show and you'd like to share your brand, reach out to us over on TeacherCast. You can go to teachercast.net and let us know where you are. We would love to have you guys be featured on one of our many podcasts. Of course, if you're a technology coach, you can check out Ask the Tech Coach every single Monday morning at 6 a.m. If you're interested in educational podcasting, you can go to educationalpodcasting.com and learn how you can bring audio and video into your classroom And, of course, check out our great resources for classroom teachers over at podcastingwithstudents.com. And that wraps up this episode of The Jeff Bradbury Show. I want to say thank you to my good friend, Dr. Sarah Thomas, for coming on and sharing the EduMatch story with us. I promise you this was just part one of the interview. There's so much more that we can dive in. But until that time, on behalf of Sarah and everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions on your brands. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.